Hello, how are you doing? So this weekend, I am going to be reading some books. It's currently Friday morning, it's like 10 o'clock Friday morning, and I am going to be taking part in the Groundhog Day Readathon, which is started by my friend Jazz at Travels in Fiction. I forgot your YouTube channel name then, I'm sorry, Jazz. And Sean at Caffeine and Commas. They have put together this readathon that is basically, it starts from today, so it's like running now, and it runs until midnight on Sunday, I think. And the whole point of the readathon is to read your favourite books. So you can pick like one book, you can pick several books or whatever, but you pick your favourite books and you read them <laughs> over the weekend. And there's a group chat on Instagram and it's a lot of fun. I can't wait to get started. So I was deliberating for ages what book I was going to pick. I was debating doing The Snow Child by uh, Aon Ivy, which is one of my favourite books but I kind of remember everything about it, so I didn't know if I wanted to reread it. Uh, the next option is Unwind by Neil Shusterman. It's interesting because it was one of my favourite books like eight years ago or something when I first read it, and there's a lot that I can't remember about it, and I'm wondering if I read it again now, would it be completely different? Like, why, would my opinions change? So that I thought that could be an interesting one to do. But recently, like, I finished watching it this morning. I watched Emma at Drinking By My Shelf. She did the, what's it called? It's like the PJ Dayathon or something. Um, it was basically, it was run by a couple of people and they spent a whole day just like reading books. And she decided to try and reread every single book in the series of unfortunate events series, which is just mad. Like there's 13 books in that series. I know they're quite short, but her video was just so fun where she spent 24 hours trying to read all of the books and watching that made me really want to start rereading the books so I've kind of decided that that's what I want to do this weekend. I think starting today I might see just how many of the books I can get through. I'm definitely not going to get through all 13 of them like that's not going to happen but yeah I am kind of excited to start reading them today and just see how many I can get through this weekend. I've got almost no plans this weekend, like my only plan is to go to town and do some bits, like I've got to take a book back to the library and then grab some bits from town and that's pretty much it. I've got to film a video, it's the one that for you actually has just gone up on Saturday, which for me is tomorrow. Video is confusing. <laughs> Uh, and that is my like TBR for February and what I read in January. So I'm gonna film that and edit that and upload it. But yeah, apart from that, I am excited to just have like a reading weekend. <laughs> so I think that's what I'm gonna do. Let's get started. My aim is to try and like vlog bits throughout the weekend, but I don't know if that's gonna happen. If you've just seen my uh, massively long rereading books that I studied from high school, you will probably see that I'm not great at vlogging yet. It's not my strength, <laughs> so maybe I'll try and practice this weekend, but if not, I'm just gonna try and read all the books. I'll just get some fun shots to include and then talk about it again when I finish on Sunday or maybe on Monday. So let's go. So here's my collection of books. One thing that I've only just realized, <laughs> I've only just remembered is that, can you see one that's missing there? right here. I don't have number eight. Um, so if I do get that far this weekend, if I do kind of fly through them all and do get that far, then I don't know what to do about number eight because I don't own it. Hang on, let me turn the camera around. Because <laughs> I kept picking up random books from like charity shops and stuff. I have random books, so like I have random ones in the series, so like some of the hardbacks that towards the end I just got for really cheap from charity shops, but that meant that I had gaps, like I had random gaps throughout the series, so my mum got me the specific ones that I had missing for Christmas, like the year before last, but for some reason the people that she bought them from sent her like two of number seven rather than seven and eight. So I have just never bought number eight to catch up, so I think I either need to go on like Amazon Prime and buy number eight so it comes tomorrow or I'm thinking maybe I should look on something like Scribd and see if number eight is like as an ebook on Scribd and then I can read it that way if I do get that far this weekend. I might do that. Ah, it is. 
nice. So that means I can now get started as soon as I can, because I want to see how many I can get through. Yeah, I'll just have to take a break from the actual physical books as soon as I get to number eight, read it on Scribd as an ebook, and then continue with the physical books once I get to number nine and carry on from there. Cool. That's good to know. Okay, so I've got number one ready. I'm in my comfy chair. Um, let's get going. I thought I would just read a bit before I start work today. Um, like I don't have any plans tonight, so I feel like if my work just kind of goes on a bit because I'm reading this, then sure, that's fine. <laughs> uh, you know, priorities. Obviously this is way more important. <laughs> it's really short and like the text is uh, really kind of big on each of the pages. So it shouldn't be too bad. So let's get going and see how much I can read before I start work today. <laughs> One thing I love with these books and the film as well, it does it in the film, is when Sunny just makes a noise and he explains what she's probably saying. So like where it says, for instance, this morning she was saying gack over and over, which probably meant look at that mysterious figure emerging from the fog. <laughs> I just love the idea of little kids making noises and these singular noises just mean entire sentences. That just, it makes me laugh. I feel like I can tell I'm an adult reading this now rather than a kid because the thoughts going through my head when like Mr. Poe takes them to Count Olaf's house, the first thing I thought was like, well, where are social services in this situation? Would social services not look at this house and be like, you can't send children there, including a baby? Uh, but no, clearly social services don't exist in this world. <laughs> I also love how no one seems to really care about where they go. Like, Mr. Poe is in charge with looking after them and he takes them to this random house uh, that is just gross, like it's dirty and dilapidated and falling apart. And then he's just like, okay, bye kids. And that's it. Such a caring adult. <laughs> as much as people say that they don't like the film with Jim Carrey, I keep thinking about things that he says in that film, because I just love that film. And it's just the bit where they made, uh, put an Esca sauce for all the um, theatre troupe and he was just like, where's the roast beef? And when in the film, when they're just like, roast beef? And he's like, it's a French term for beef that is roasted. <laughs> just, it's classic. Right, I have already read 46 pages and it's literally only been like 10 minutes or something. So I'm gonna grab some cereal um, and then I'm gonna carry on reading because I think I can read this literally now before I start work. Like it's only 140 pages and I've just read 40 pages in like 10 minutes. So uh, I can get through this so quickly. And also I've read this so many times before. Like uh, Emma in her video was saying that she's read all the earlier books but not the later ones. And I feel like I'm exactly the same. Like I've read all the early books so many times, especially the first one. Cause I keep going back to the series. Like, yes, I'm gonna read it and then I read like the first few books and then don't carry on. So I'm determined to read all the books this time. But yeah, I remember this one so well. So it's just kind of like scanning it and refreshing my memory on it before I move on to ones that are less familiar to me. So yeah, I'm gonna grab some cereal and then I'm gonna carry on with this before I start work today. <laughs> didn't take me long at all. I didn't think it would. One thing that I thought was really cool that I've never noticed before is that there's 13 chapters. Like I was on like chapter 11 or something and I was like, oh, how cool would it be if there's 13 chapters because there's 13 books and like, you know, 13 is like the unlucky number. And then I got to chapter 13 and I was like, oh my God, there actually are 13 chapters. That's so great. I'm kind of now interested to look at the rest of the books and see if there's 13 chapters in all the books. I might do that right now. So I'm gonna do some work now. 
because that is my job and I really need to do that. Uh, and then I will carry on with these later. I'm kind of tempted to carry on with them as audiobooks while I'm working. I'm currently listening to I Was Born For This by Alice Oseman on audiobook and that's great, but I've got like an hour of it left. Um, and I'm really getting into listening to them while I work at the moment because I've just had a lot of kind of repetitive, tedious work to do. So it's quite good to listen to audiobooks while I'm doing it. I might see if the next couple of audiobooks are on Scribd and carry on as audiobooks because then I can like still carry on with the readathon while I'm working. I can, it's like ultimate multitasking. So I'll check in again later, maybe. Um, if not, then it'll be tomorrow because uh, it depends how long my work takes. It's gonna take me a while to get through it, I think. So um, yeah, I'll check in again once I've read more, potentially as audiobooks. <laughs> I've just finished I Was Born For This, the audiobook. So good, I really liked it. I've seen different opinions of it, but I really liked it. I think because I've been a fangirl for uh, all my life for various things, I just, it was a really cool story for me to listen to. I really liked it a lot. So now that that's done, I'm still working. I just listen to stuff as I'm working. I am going to listen to the second, <laughs> I forgot the name of the series that I'm reading, Jesus Christ. I'm gonna listen to the second a Series of Unfortunate Events book on Scribd. It's read by Tim Curry, which is gonna be really interesting. Uh, I don't know what that's gonna be like. I know the American versions are actually read by Daniel Hadler, like Lemony Snicket, but yeah, the UK ones are Tim Curry. So that's gonna be really interesting. So I am going to listen to that now while I work and while I eat lunch and stuff. And I'm looking forward to listening to it as an audiobook. They're really short. I think they're like a couple of hours because the books are so short, especially the first couple. It shouldn't take me very long, so I'll definitely finish it while I'm working today, which is really good. I'm not sure if the third one is on script. I will have to have a look at that, but if it is, that'll be great, because I can just carry on listening to the audiobooks then. Um, but if not, I'll read it later. I'll see. <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you that this story begins with the Baudelaire orphans traveling along this most displeasing road, and that from this moment on, the story only gets worse. Of all the people in the world who have miserable lives, and as I'm sure you know, there are quite a few. I'm just making some lunch. Sorry if you can hear the kettle boiling. Um, I, I'm not sure how I'm finding this audiobook so far. The narration is fun. Like, Tim Curry's narration is very fun to listen to. He does character voices really well. One thing that's kind of making me cringe a little bit, and it's just a personal thing, is um, Mr. Poe has a cough, and like, he has it in the Netflix series as well. And Tim Curry constantly does his cough, so like, every time he speaks he has this really horrible spluttering cough. I really hate the sound of people coughing, especially if it's like a really gross, spluttery, kind of like, throaty cough. It's really gross, and every time he does it I'm like, Ugh, I can't, <laughs> I can't listen to it. It makes me cringe literally every time he does it. But Mr. Poe's gone now, so I'm hoping that it won't be, uh, I won't have to listen to it for a while. <laughs> I'll see how I go. I'm just gonna make some lunch and then I'm gonna maybe carry on reading the actual physical book or maybe not, I'm not sure. I'll see what happens. <laughs> Another thing I just thought of as well, one thing I really love in these books is um, how he keeps alluding to things that are gonna happen, but kind of really obviously, it's not even subtle. Like, uh, my arm's aching, hang on, I'm gonna put you down. <laughs> There's this one bit where the incredibly deadly viper comes out to um, like, and it wraps itself around Sunny, and it's just like, the chapter ends by saying Sunny's bitten on the chin by this snake. And then the next chapter is like, I bet you thought I'd come back and Sunny would be dead, but she's not. However, Dr. Monty is going to be dead soon, but we'll come to that. <laughs> like, um, what? <laughs> like, I know what happens, but it's just so funny that it's just like, oh yeah, by the way, Monty's gonna be dead soon, but we'll get to that eventually. I love it. I'm halfway through The Reptile Room, the second book and it's just making me laugh. I wanted to just quickly say how much it's making me laugh that... So right now, 
Count Olaf is disguised as uh, Uncle Monty's um, like assistant and he's just killed him. And spoilers in case you haven't read it. <laughs> and Mr. Poe is there at the moment uh, trying to sort things out. Uh, Count Olaf has this really bad accent. I don't even know what accent is supposed to be. It's like Russian or something. He keeps calling Mr. Poe different names and it's just making me laugh so much. And I don't know why I just can't stop laughing. Like he's like, he calls him like Mr. Doe. And then he's just like, he just called him Mr. Yo and Mr. Toe. And I don't know why I'm like a child. I'm just, it's making me laugh so much. Every time he calls him a different name, I just can't stop laughing. I'm such a child. <laughs> That's literally all I wanted to come on and say. Oh, also, I realised earlier that I said Dr. Monty, and I thought even when I said it, Dr. Monty sounds really wrong. I've just realised that it's Uncle Monty and not Dr. Monty. So that's why I sounded so, like, it, I thought it sounded wrong with me saying Dr. Monty. Because it was, it's Uncle Monty. Just wanted to clear that up. <laughs> Another bit that just made me laugh in this uh, book is... They're talking about Sunny and they know that, like they, she screams so much that they know when a scream sounds fake. And <laughs> the narrator is like, uh, so they, they know when her scream is absolutely fake. That sounded absolutely fake, thought Klaus. And then that sounded absolutely fake, said Violet. <laughs> if you know somebody very well, like your grandmother or your baby sister, you will know when they are real and when they are fake. This is why, as Sunny began to scream, Violet and Klaus could tell immediately that her scream was absolutely fake. That scream is absolutely fake, Klaus said to himself from the other end of the reptile room. That scream is absolutely fake, Violet said to herself from the stairs as she went up to her room. <laughs> My lord, something is terribly wrong! Mm, it just makes me laugh so much. <laughs> like, I just love the repetition in these books. It's so funny. Like, There's so much that they say that it's just repeated like three times like the narrator will say something and then one of the characters will say something either in their dialogue or they think something and it's just it's so funny like I just love the repetition. I have finished the second audiobook so The Reptile Room I have now finished. Very strange as an audiobook because I've never listened to them as audiobooks before. It's a very strange experience. <laughs> the narration is generally really good there's a couple of things that were just personal things like I was saying about Pose coughing and things. I was just kind of like, ugh, gross. But <laughs> I will definitely, I think I'm going to read the rest of them now because I will be finishing work soon. So I can go back to like reading my physical books rather than listening to the audiobook. But yeah, I think listening to the audiobook has really helped to get me ahead because otherwise I wouldn't have read it until I finished work. So I've kind of got another book read while I've been working. So it's been really good to kind of multitask. <laughs> my sister is on her way home now. She's getting stuff for tea so that's gonna be great so I'll try and read a bit more tonight I might carry on reading when I'm in bed I also do want to finish some of the other books that I've started sorry I'm spinning on my chair I, I'm sorry if that's really uh, annoying to watch yeah I've got some other books I want to try and finish as well so I might try and finish those in bed tonight but I've got the whole weekend now to try and see how many of these series of unfortunate events books I can get through yeah I'm excited to start working my way through them Good morning! It is the next day. I finished reading the third book in the series last night. I read so much yesterday. I read the first three books. Uh, I think I worked out that was something like 540 pages or something in total, so that was kind of crazy. And then I also read 200 pages, just under 200 pages of The Prisoner of Azkaban. Um, I'm I can't remember if I've mentioned it in this video. I'm doing a Harry Potter um, reread at the moment. Yeah, I read like 200 pages of The Prisoner of Azkaban last night and finished it. So, because I want to try and do one a month. And Prisoner of Azkaban was my January one. So I really want to move on to Goblet of Fire this month. Um, so yeah, I tried to finish it yesterday and I was like, oh, it's fine. I can just finish it tomorrow. And then I just couldn't. It got to the bit where they're using the time turner and they're going to save Buckbeak and Sirius and... I was just like, I can't put this down. I can't. I've just got to finish reading it. <laughs> I can't put it down right now. This is like the most tense bit of the whole book. Um, but that's irrelevant. I'm not talking about Harry Potter in this video. I'm talking about series of unfortunate events. <laughs> the third book was so funny. Um, I think the second book so far has been like the funniest one. Like I laughed at it so much. Uh, there's this bit in the book 
where, because I, I listen to it as an audiobook mostly, there's an entire page where it's just ever repeated for an entire page. Uh, like it just goes ever, 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 ever for an entire page. Uh, and it's, it's basically saying you should never play with electrical devices. It's so funny to listen to the audiobook because Tim Curry is just sitting there going ever, 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 ever. Oh my god. I was listening to it on like 1.5 times speed, I think. I can't imagine listening to it on like the normal speed because it must just take forever. And there's just so many parts in that book that just make me laugh so much. So yeah, the third one was... Uh, the Wide Window, which is where they go to Aunt Josephine's house. Yeah, it's another one that... It's the first three that I just remember really clearly. I think it's because they're all um, what the first... Like, what the film was based on. Like, the first three books was what the Jim Carrey film was based on. So I remember reading those quite a lot because I really liked the film as a kid. It gets to this point now where I start to have less of an idea of what is coming next. I remember bits from the Netflix show. So like the next one is The Miserable Mill. And I remember bits of it, like I remember it quite a bit from the Netflix show. So I've got it right here actually. Um, it's gonna be interesting to read this because there's so much of it that I can't remember. I can't even remember if I've read this book. I think from now on, I think I might have literally only read the first three. So yeah, today I'm gonna power through some more of these books. Uh, I need to go to town today to get some stuff done, but I might take one with me so I can like sit down somewhere and read it, maybe. And then I need to film a video as well that's going up today. So yeah, I've got quite a busy day planned, but most of it is just going to be reading books, which sounds great. I'm so excited. <laughs> uh, hi, good morning. I look a complete state. I feel like you see me looking a uh, gross state more often than you see me looking decent. <laughs> so I finished book four this morning. For some reason it's one of my least favourite ones and I don't know why. Like, uh, it gets better towards the end. I feel like the beginning of it, I don't, it's not my favourite. Um, I'm not even sure why though. Like, I don't really have any reasons. <laughs> um, it's just not my favourite one. I still like all the stuff towards the end with like all the hypnotism and stuff. Like, that's really clever. <laughs> so I now have number four, no, I've just read number four. I now have number five and six ready um, here. I am back in my usual reading spot with my comfy chair and my blanket and I'm still in my pajamas. So I am gonna move on to the next one now and maybe get some snacks. I also had a bit of an epiphany last night or kind of this morning about a novel that I wrote for NaNoWriMo in November 2018, so it's been a while, over a year. And I'm just not a big fan of this novel that I wrote. Like, I wrote 50,000 words of it, so it's not done yet. But I was just, there's something about it that I wasn't a big fan of. And I had a dream last night, something kind of completely unrelated to it, that I thought, oh, I could kind of tie that in, because that would be really cool to tie it in. And then kind of woke up at half six, with this big epiphany for what I could do to fix it. And I now have all these ideas. I spent like probably 45 minutes or something just lying in bed this morning, writing down all of these different ideas on a note on my phone. And yeah, I've now got loads of ideas. So now I'm kind of torn whether I carry on reading to see how many books I can read for this readathon or start doing some writing. Why does this happen when I already have books that I need to read? <laughs> God damn it. Anyway, um, I might make myself look decent soon and then I will let you know when I've read the next book. <laughs> so I still haven't moved. It's 3 p.m. and I literally haven't moved. I got up to tidy the kitchen and like wash up and uh, just move around and stuff. But I have literally not moved. I have finished number five, better than the last one, prefer it to the last one, and we start to get more kind of intriguing 
elements to it that we know are going to come up in future books now. So like VFD and like the um, quagmire triplets and yeah, it's starting to get interesting now and it's starting to get after this book, it gets to a point where I don't really know the stories because I think the Netflix show, as far as I've seen, I don't think I'm even caught up with it, but I think as far as I've seen, it only went up to the next one, which is like the Ursatz elevator. Anything past that, I haven't seen. So it's gonna be really interesting now to catch up or to kind of like read past that because I don't know any of the stories at all. Like I have no idea what's gonna happen. So yeah, it's very exciting. <laughs> I think I'm gonna read the next one now, which is number six, and then possibly have a break to do some writing. Um, I'm not sure yet, or I'll see if I'll just carry straight on. Um, I have also just ordered number eight, the one that I have missing, on Amazon Prime, so it should get here tomorrow. So if I do want to carry on after number seven, which I don't, I don't know if I will, then I will read it maybe on Scribd as an ebook until the book comes tomorrow. But if not, I might get to number seven and kind of pause there. I'll see. I'll see how determined I am to try and finish like all of the books but I don't think that's gonna happen because I do have other stuff that I want to do today um like I need to get up and actually shower and like do something useful so I don't know I'll see what happens <laughs> so it's the next day it's now Monday I didn't update anymore yesterday I kind of my sister came home and we had tea and we just I forgot to film anything to be honest I was so cozy reading and we were just like watching stuff on tv and I just completely forgot to record because I'm the world's worst vlogger but now it's Monday and the readathon is done the Groundhog Day readathon is officially done as of midnight last night and I managed to read six books I managed to read six series of unfortunate events books which is all right it's kind of fewer than I would have hoped for I hoped to get through like as many in the series as I could have but I just had so many distractions this weekend like I went to town and I got loads of stuff done and yesterday I had some other stuff to do that wasn't just reading but I was kind of reading slower than I thought I would. I was kind of, I thought I could just race through these, but I found myself kind of taking a little while to read each one because I wanted to read them properly rather than just like scan them because so much happens in these books. You get so many little clues and like, I don't know, all sorts of things happen that I just wanted to kind of take my time with them and not rush them. And yeah, I obviously kind of got distracted by just watching stuff on TV and things like that. So I kind of hoped I could have read more but there you go reading six books in a weekend where I originally only planned to read one I think is still pretty decent <laughs> I'm proud of that I think considering it was a bit of a whim reading six books in a weekend is pretty decent even if they are quite short one thing that is great about this is that I'm now kind of really motivated to reread some other books so some books that are favorites that I've read previously so like Unwind and uh god I don't even know there's some that I've got on my shelf that I read years ago that I said were my favourites that I've kind of forgotten a lot about and I'm kind of interested now to start going back and reading some of my old favourites and see what I think of them and obviously I'm also now motivated to carry on with the rest of the series of unfortunate events books and find out what happens because from now I think maybe The Vile Village is the last one that I remember, but only because it was in the Netflix series. I haven't read the book, so from now, uh, it's all new to me. So I'm going to be finding stuff out that I still haven't known before. Like, I don't know how the series ends. I don't know what all the VFD stuff is about. Like, I have no idea. So I will definitely come back and talk about the whole series once I've read them all. Uh, hopefully it won't be too long. So yeah, that's quite exciting. I'm really excited to see what happens in the rest of the series. Every time I'm filming, Alexa makes a noise. Alexa, stop. I didn't mean to talk to you. So a quick recap of these books. I The sixth one is upstairs because I finished it in bed last night and I forgot to bring it down, but 
Uh, I have the first five. <laughs> the first to the third, I think, I remember the most, especially the first and second. So um, the bad beginning and the reptile room. I remember those completely, like everything about them I remember because I've read them probably several times by this point. And obviously they're in the Jim Carrey film and they're also in Netflix show. So yeah, I remember those the most. And then The Wide Window is also one I remember the story of, again, because of the film. But I kind of remember reading the book. There are some elements of it that I had forgotten, but most of it is, I just remember it entirely. So we go to number four, which is The Miserable Mill. And like I said, when I was reading it. For some reason, it's not one of my favourite ones. Like, there's... I don't know what it is about it. It's just... The story-wise, it's just not one of my favourite ones. It's probably out of these that I've read so far, so out of the first six. It's, like, one of my least favourite ones, and I'm not even sure why. Um, I don't really have any particular reasons why it would be my least favourite one. It just kind of is. But it's still really interesting, like I was saying, like I'm still interested in the, all the like, hypnosis stuff, um, I think that's really cool. And yeah, I don't know, just story-wise, it just wasn't my favourite one. Number five, which is the Austere Academy, I kind of, again, the only way I remember some of the story is from the Netflix show. I kind of remember there's like the crazy violin playing vice principal and the horrible girl that is just like bullying them. Um, I don't remember much about the quagmire triplets. Um, it's funny calling them triplets. One thing I love is that they're always referred to as the quagmire triplets even though there's two of them uh, and it's because one of them died in the fire with their parents and it's just funny that they're still always referenced as the quagmire triplets so when people like talk to other people about them they're like have you seen our friends the triplets and they're like but there's two of them um yeah it's funny i really like them i really love like the friendship between all of the kids and i'm also very intrigued to see how they link obviously because all of their parents so like the baudelaire parents and the quagmire parents all died in their own homes in fires um, I can't remember any details about that, like I can't remember why or if I even know yet what happens there. Um, I kind of remember that they may be all part of some sort of society or something, but I cannot remember for the life of me anything that happens. So I'm so excited to see what happens and like how everything links. And then number six is one that I can't remember even though I just finished it last night. Oh, <laughs> number six is the Ursatz Elevator and it's the one where they go to live in like this huge apartment building and they live in the penthouse and it makes me laugh where uh, Mr. Poe is just like, I can't remember if it's like the 48th or the 84th floor, it's one of them, because they just lose count because they can't use the elevator because elevators are out right now and uh, stairs are in and <laughs> um, I can't imagine living in a world where you can only go by, like you can only use and wear things that are in right now. It's just such a funny concept where they're just like, they'll get a phone call and they're just like, dark is out and light is in. So all the lights suddenly come on and like people are outside soaring down trees because trees cause darkness and it's just so funny and like suddenly they could get a phone call and like a certain food is out or a certain type of clothes are in and everyone suddenly changes because you don't want to be seen dead wearing something that's out and it's just really funny. That element of it just makes me laugh. Yeah, I really like that one, the Ursatz Elevator. I really enjoyed. Um, it's just so fun and we get kind of deeper into the whole VFD plot and wondering what is going to happen and yeah it's just I really like that one a lot. So that's as far as I got. I'm kind of interested now to get further through the series and uh, see how the things that I'm reading so far link into like part of the bigger picture. I I'm really glad that I picked these for this readathon because otherwise I kind of wouldn't be interested or so interested as I am now to 
finish reading all the books and they would still sit there on my shelf unfinished. If you've read these books, um, whether you've read some of them or all of them, whatever, um, let me know in the comments what you think of them. Which one is your favourite? It would be interesting to know if you have like a favourite one from the series or a least favourite. And yeah, let's discuss them in the comments. So if you like this video and you want to see more like it from me, then I post videos twice a week at the moment, usually on Tuesdays and Fridays, but it can sometimes vary a bit but twice a week I'm kind of aiming for right now. So if you want to see more videos, subscribe below and click the like button because it would help me a heck of a lot. And I will see you on Friday with another video. Hi, I know I've just ended the video, but um, I just thought I'd share with you because it's relevant. Book eight just turned up in the post. So now I have the full set. So even though I'm not doing the readathon anymore, I can now read all the books because the one that I had missing has just turned up. So, hooray! Okay, bye.